What's going on guys, Bengal again here, coming back at you with another video, and today, doing another rebuild, clearly you can tell from the title, the team we choose is irrelevant here because we're going to be choosing the worst team in the league 50 years into the future. Of course, you've already, you know, been able to tell that from the title, maybe even the thumbnail, but this one should be a lot of fun. It's in some way, shape, or form been highly requested for a long time, so I figured we'd finally do it. We're going to have no active players in the NFL at this moment so it should be very very interesting hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already it's completely free best way to support me with absolutely no payment whatsoever just one click and i would be very appreciative but let's go ahead jump in and simulate 50 years i'll see you in 2070 okay so it turns out if you simulate 50 years in the future you can't because it ends at 2050 so here we are in 2040 it's 20 years into the future but uh, I'm also going to keep the title the same because it's funny that I thought that was possible and it isn't. So we're going to be looking at not only the team that we have now, which was... I had to recreate the league, so I'm the 49ers now. But I'll be changing to the worst team, uh, whoever had the worst record the previous season. It's a decent team for the 49ers, but again, this is not going to be our team. They have an 80 overall. A couple good players out here, including a superstar X-Factor defensive tackle, only 28 years old. Mainly a run stopper, but offers a little bit of a pass rush. Is this George Clinton? Ah, that would have been fun. Uh, but all right, it is 2040. I also saw a superstar X-Factor 72 overall outside linebacker. Did I see that correctly? How old is he? Mike Newberry, 33 years old. Yikes. But all right, 2040. Let's check out the legacy leaderboard. Let's check out some of the NFL records. So who snuck onto this list? Baker Mayfield with the Falcons is the third leading passer all time. What is happening? Russell Wilson, Eagles, fourth. Lamar Jackson on the Broncos is fifth. I like how Peyton Manning is listed on the Colts here instead of the Broncos and Brett Favre Packers, obviously, instead of the last team they played for. So it, it kind of confuses me why Baker's Falcons instead of Browns. Maybe he played on the Falcons for longer in this. Patrick Mahomes is in there, 71,000. But look at this at the bottom. Ziegler and Gaffney for the Bills and Browns. Almost 70,000 passing yards all time. For touchdowns, who gets on this list? Joe Burrow is tied with Ziegler, both on the Bengals. Both with 566. What is happening? That's weird. For rushing yards, Zeke is the new all-time leading rusher. Josh Jacobs is two. Saquon, three. They all pass Emmett Smith. Joe Mixon gets on there. Clyde Edwards-Alaire gets on there. Christian McCaffrey with the Vikings. Walter Payton, of course. Nick Chubb with the Browns. Frank Gore, of course, still active on the Jets right now as I record this. Rushing touchdowns. Emmett still has it all the time, but Zeke, number two. Nick Chubb, number four. Josh Jacobs, five. Saquon. Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Alvin Kamara. And then Bradley for the Chiefs, whoever that is. He actually might be on the team right now. We'll check that out. Receiving yards. Julio's number three all time. DK is number four. T.O. DeAndre Hopkins. Spence for the Cardinals. Just have to check him out. See if he's still active. Odell went to the Saints. Receiving touchdowns. We have Spence. I mean, who who is that? Because clearly, that guy looks like a monster. Cardinals for receiving yards, but for receiving touchdowns. Eagles? Okay. Jacoby Myers has 125 touchdowns all time. There's no way that's who that is. It might be. Tongue for the Jags. Larry Fitz, Tyreek Hill on the Dolphins. Catches. Got DK, Jason Witten, Devontae Adams on the Falcons with Baker. What a combination that was. Defensive sacks, Miles Garrett is the all-time leader by a lot. 218. Chase Young with 204. Aaron Donald, 184. Nick Bosa. Kevin Green uh, unfortunately passed away today as I record this. Rest in peace, Kevin Green. You know, that's super impressive. J.J. Watt ending up on the Lions. T.J. Watt at the exact same number on the Buccaneers for interceptions. I doubt anyone's going to be in here who's new. K. Riley for the Bengals. That's interesting. Yeah, Ken Riley. I thought that's what his name was, but uh, definitely not someone I remember. Retired in 1983. Just heard the name in passing. 65 interceptions all time. That is crazy. But that is career numbers. Did anyone break a single season record, I wonder? 
So Peyton Manning still holds it. Lamar Jackson with the Cardinals got real close. Jameis Winston with the Bucks in 2019 at 5,100 yards. I know that was last year. I didn't realize it got that high. Passing touchdowns. No one ever comes close to Peyton Manning's 55. And in simulation, only one player got to 46 or higher. Actually, Mahomes did as well, 46. We need more passing touchdowns in simulation sometimes. Rushing yards, no one was ever going to beat this in sim. I mean, no one even gets close. Yeah, they need to change that sometimes, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Nick Chubb at 24 rushing touchdowns in 2025. He's the only one to get over 20. Receiving yards. This I could see actually having somebody in here, but nobody is. Receiving touchdowns. Again, kind of same deal, but no one has changed. Catches. I'd be surprised, but Solomon for the Packers at 125. Sacks of the season. Garrett breaks the record, gets 24, 22 in 2022. Feeling 22. Nick Bosa had 21 in the season, and then interceptions, no one's going to be even close. They don't have enough interceptions in simulation either. That's a thing that I don't really particularly care for. For legacy leaderboard, for quarterback, Tom Brady, Lamar Jackson's a Hall of Famer, Mahomes is a Hall of Famer, Russell Wilson, Hall of Famer, Baker, Hall of Famer, A-Rod, Big Ben, all Hall of Famers. Halfback, Zeke Barkley, a lot of guys are Hall of Fame running backs clearly receivers larry fitz still stays at number one howard 99 overall superstar x factor monster okay i mean we have some pretty good players in here tight end mark andrews is the leading tight end all time hall of famer wow left tackle rivers offensive line doesn't really matter all that much just surprised to see a legacy score so high. 14 yearly awards for John Pierman. I mean, he's looking like one of the best offensive linemen in NFL history. Josh Allen's a Hall of Famer. The highest left end ever. Passes J.J. Watt. McCain. Cliff McCain for the Browns. Still hanging in there. T-Sizzle. Defensive tackle. There's a new guy in town. McBride. Hall of Famer. Ed Oliver, number two. Fletcher Cox. DeForest Buckner. Kenny Clark. We get Landry in there. Who's this? Donald Howard, 34 years old. I was looking for Aaron Donald, and then you remember he's listed at 3-4 defensive end. He's number two all time behind Miles Garrett. Chase Young. Nick Bosa. A. Riley. C. Long. Generated players. Wish we could actually click on those guys and see what they're all about. Donovan Bradham is in there Kaplan for the Cowboys and it seems like they've had some pretty good players the Browns do with Curtis Nazir Curtis 95 overall pretty good at block shedding 99 block shed left outside linebacker Khalil Mack TJ Watt Von Miller middle linebacker Roquan Smith is number one all time number two is Peter Malone so a pretty good inside backer L Averill He's a free agent right now. Right outside linebacker is Bolden. We got Jenkins at number two. Pretty good player for the Bears. Cornerback, number one all time is Patrick Peterson. Hall of Famer, number two is Damian Shepard. He's 34. Still a pretty good overall. Friedman, free agent. Coverage is so bad. Free safety is Monroe. No one's in the Hall of Fame. He's a super low overall. Can we see someone that's younger, 30? Not even a good overall at all. Adams. J.J. Adams. There we go. And he's still even getting better. A little slow, but pretty good. And then strong safety. We got Truman. Can I click on him, please? Terrence Truman. 34 years old. Superstar X-Factor safety. Barry Davis. Number one kicker is Justin Tucker. The best kicker of all time, so that makes sense to me. And then punter is Mobley. Bryce Mobley. 37 years old. 72 overall but that is how the coaching staff looks we can see who's won super bowls one for mcveigh but of course uh, coaches would have changed so a little bit tougher to see but let's go ahead and see what the worst team in the nfl is
So we're going to do it based off overall. I didn't think we were going to, but I can't see standings right now. Seems like every team's about the same. Washington football team is a 78. They're tied. Bengals are 77. They're looking like a strong candidate. And it will be the Cincinnati Bengals. Okay. So, oh, lucky I get to rebuild my favorite team. Hilarious. Never heard that one before. I am a Giants fan. Let's go ahead and check out this roster. See what they're all about. So, of course, it's the lowest overall team in the league, but they're not actually terrible. 77 could be a lot worse. What do we have to work with? So, we have a quarterback here. He's 27, and he's not good. He's got to go. Running back is Corey Claxton. He's 34. He's got to go. Even with superstar X-Factor, doesn't matter. Lamar Crocker's 29. So, not only do we have no good players on this team, we also don't seem to have youth. 31 for Jason McCann. Jason McCann. I'm thinking of James McCann for the uh, the Mets now, catcher. Strickland at tight end. Is he young at least? 31. Oh my God. This team did not draft or sign anyone of any reasonably young age. It's an old bad team. What about Richard? How young are you? 22. This could be our guy. This could be our guy. Richard steps into the starting role, and then defensively, you got to have some good players on defense. Shadon Andrews is 33. Is Glover young? 29. Where are all the good young players going on this team? They've drafted so poorly. Keenan Casey is 30. What about Montague? 30. Burnett? 24. Okay. He's a good player. We can build around that. Is Carr going to be younger? 29. Anything on the defensive line? Quincy Leslie is 30. Eric Ware is 29. Flynn, 23. Okay, so he's someone we can build around potentially. What about Lasley? Did Joshua Lasley? Probably just goes by Josh if I had to bet. He's decent. He's decent. How old is he again? To Joshua, he's only 23. Lasley and Leslie up the middle, and then Sherrod Jenkins looks to be pretty good as well. But overall, this team is pretty old and pretty bad. Not where you want to be. I got to make a lot of trades. Roberts and Claxton to the Jets for a first rounder. We don't even know what team's going to have like the lowest picks because things could change a lot. CJ Portis, maybe the son or potential grandson at this point of Clinton Portis. He's just not very good. I mean, everyone is just so old and so bad. This is brutal. Okay, Crocker straight up for D. Florence. I'm not going to know any of their first names. You're going to have to bear with me. They are make-believe players. They're from the land of make-believe. I have no idea who they are. He's also one of the highest overall players on our team right now, and he's only been in the league a few years. 24 years old. Figured this was a pretty good pickup. Not even knowing his development trait. I wonder... It's going to be tough to get superstar development players who are young. I sure would like to try. If I can get like the lowest overall superstar dev players in trade, uh, in trades, we could be doing okay. So let me go ahead and uh, try to figure out who they might be. We are trading for a 69 overall player here. Nice. But we're doing so by trading a 77 and 74 Glover and Coil. Here's the deal. If you go to our team, thankfully it's at the top. He's only 69 overall, but he does have superstar development. So I'm willing to trade a lot to get this guy because we know he's going to develop pretty quickly. He's only 24 years old. We might have something here. It's a bit of a gamble, but it was one I you know needed to take because we don't have a whole lot to work with right now. Well, I don't know if that was worth it because we traded a future first, but Stockton, 28-year-old right tackle, and Montague, 30-year-old cornerback around the move for Montague. We're trading Montague for Montague. I didn't even realize that. We got big Frank Montague. Sounds kind of like a uh, like an Irish mobster, potentially. I know Montague's not overly Irish, but the origins are English and Irish. It sounds like a French name, but you got Frank it kind of sounds like, you know, an I, whatever. You guys get the point. Uh, I could think of a mobster being named Frank, and then 
you know, whatever. You guys get the point. He's pretty good. 25 years old. Superstar dev. Decent speed, hit power, coverage. I think he's a complete package at strong safety. So we are picking up a pretty good option there as I try to trade Keenan Casey. I'm just looking for uh, younger players with good development traits that we can build around. And that's what we're going after right now. Oh, I'm sorry. What? I was scrolling through rosters. We got Paul. Paul? Listen, I... I ran about John Johnson, but this is not very creative. <laughs> this is somehow even worse. His name is Paul Paul. I'm appalled. Jesus. I decided to value receiver over right tackle here. I just think the offensive line is fairly replaceable. So we have picked up Lloyd Allen. He is a 78 overall, only 23 years old. Physical type with good speed. Route running is pretty bad, but overall, I think he can be a really good receiver for us. His personality is intense. I don't really know what that means for the game. <laughs> but uh, 6'5", 235, 23 years old. Big body. Could be a stud for us. Bryce Love. Not to be confused, of course, with Bryce Love. This one is a receiver. So we got Sharp and Turner. 70 overall middle linebacker and strong safety. As well as a sixth rounder in 2042, which is next year for Pendleton. He's a receiver, and I think I'm pretty much set with our receiving core now. Oh, wait. Yeah, there he is. He's I'm like, I couldn't find him. Uh, Alfonso Pendleton, only 25 years old, but has been in the league for four years. Star dev, near an 80 overall. Offers a lot of deep route running. Another intense guy. So maybe the intensity is going to help out this team. McCann's going to get traded because he's 31. But the other guys, uh, I think it'd be a good one and two for us right out the gate. Okay, it's straight up our free safety, who I believe is only 27, might be 29 years old, 80 overall. But we are getting, I think, someone that's going to be great value for us in the form of... Oh, it's left outside linebacker. Marcus Lewis. He's only got normal development, but he's also only 22. He's a 79 overall. He's got 85 finesse moves to go along with 84 speed. He's a prototypical rush linebacker, and that's the way I want to build this team. So we picked up some big pieces for the future which is, of course, what we're planning for. I am still going to trade some of these older guys. Jace McCann, Kevin Strickland. Nothing like trading two team captains. And it's going to be a third when Quincy Leslie goes out the door. But we have to get better. We have to get younger. We're going to have to build through the draft. Let me get some picks, baby. Yeah, Cardinals super not interested in McCann. It's only an eyelash away from going through. But we're going to add a future seventh, and that should make it go. There you go. McCann gets his first-round pick back from the Cardinals. I'm trying to aim for bad, like, scheme teams so we can get better picks, even though the value on him doesn't seem amazing just because, like, it's projected to be 23rd in the draft. They don't want him. They don't want Leslie. Why? You need a D-tackle. Is he not a D-tackle? Open your eyes. But they take Blake and Portis, two 28-year-old not great players on offense. First round pick and return. This is how we're building the team. We're going to go big in free agency. We're going to go big through the draft. We need to get top tier picks. He doesn't even have a torso. I mean, this is how bad our team is. We can't even get players with bodies. It's brutal. We got... Oh, I thought this said Chris Hansen. I had so many jokes lined up. I guess I'm just going to have to save those. Leslie and a future third are headed to the Falcons for a first round pick. I need to start trading multiple players and get multiple first round picks in the form of like this year and next year. And hopefully Casey Carr and maybe Jarek Craig. I don't want someone on my team named Jarek. Shade on Andrews. Could have some value. All right, we're trading number 30. I'm probably going to end up getting that back because I don't know who has that. And I don't want to risk it being a team that's really bad. But Casey Carr and a first-round picker headed to the Panthers. We are getting a first-rounder this year and next year. And I promise you I'm getting that first-round pick back. So don't even worry about it. I know a lot of trading... It's an unrealistic rebuild, clearly. We're here in 2040. It's going to be Craig, Jarek, Craig. I don't even like saying it. It's like Eric, but with a J. But sometimes I can't, just can't say Jarek. Jarek is what it feels like it comes out as. And then uh, Sims. Not to be confused with Ernie Sims, but I think his name might be like Ernest or something. Fifth round pick as well. We get that first rounder back from the Panthers. And we get a lot of first round picks. I'll probably end up doing a video on the channel where I try to trade for every first round pick in the draft. So if you want to see that, stay tuned. It will happen. It will come. And everyone has interest in Dante Butler. He's only 24 years old, 73 overall, left tackle. I can't trade him. Just can't do it. 
I think he's our future franchise left tackle, and I just don't feel good about it. All right, Strickland, Ware, and Shadon Andrews headed to the Bears for a first rounder this year and next year. We are also getting McCullers back. He's a 60 overall D tackle, and our roster would have been below the minimum size if we didn't make that trade, so it had to happen. When I say make that trade, I mean add him to the trade. I think that was fairly obvious, but I did misspeak, so I wanted to correct that. And that is actually uh, perfect timing because I don't really have anyone else to trade the teams as I want it in terms of personnel. Like, yeah, we got worse, 74 overall now. We were like a 77. But I think personnel-wise, we got better and younger. We got a new highest overall. We're making moves. This is the team. It's pretty awful. But sometimes you got to get worse initially to get better long-term. So we're going under that kind of a strategy if you will and hopefully it pays off there's not really much else to say other than that um how old is goodrich 27 nah, he cannot be my slot guy but i will play him over harris though probably that's not what i meant to click how old is harris 24 actually i won't so sorry we are three and four at the midseason mark the browns are seven and one as they are always pretty good and our top free agent is Frank Montague. Just picked him up, but of course, we're going to have to extend him. Good thing we have 169 mil in cap room after this contract. Nice. But he's back. Matthew Burnett, got to bring him back as well. Dylan Looney, I want back as well. He's only 24, 77 overall tight end. Think he would be good to have. KJ Rogers. Oh, he's dirt cheap. He is dirt cheap for the future. So we'll bring him back, even if it just means trading him later at some point. Um, but a lot of these guys we're not really going to need. I think the biggest one is the cornerback. But Dylan Looney, if he could get up to star development, that would be fantastic. It's a pretty cheap contract. We'll bring him back, have him on the team. Matthew Burnett. This is a pretty reasonable contract as well. We're going to be able to go wild in free agency if there are any good free agents available. I know in the future, they get less good is a nice way of saying it. There's just trash in free agency all the time. It's really, really bad from what I can tell when we go super far into the future. But we'll simulate to the playoffs. This is not going to be a playoff team. I think that goes without saying. But we have played okay. Did not make the playoffs. Finishing 5-11. Thankfully, it was worse, uh, worst in the AFC South. What? AFC North? Um, and our defense was really awful. 31st. And yards was even worse somehow. Uh, point score, 32nd. This was an awful, awful, awful team. Which makes sense. Matt Richard, on the other hand, is not awful. And his season wasn't even terrible, per se. Rushing 2.6 yards per carry. I, I get that you're terrible. I get it. But oh my lord. Our offensive line was brutal as well. But Lloyd Allen really played well. He was awesome. The 6'5 beast, 82 catches for 1,100, almost 1,200 yards, 10 touchdowns. Even Alfonso Pendleton was quite good, and he should have been. 82 overall. I need performance from him. Darrell Harris didn't do much, but Dylan Looney was okay. And then defensively, Kendall Hicks, the uh, corner. Oh, yes, that's a superstar corner. That's so perfect. He had 118 tackles, a sack, four picks, three tackles for loss. What a crazy year. D. Florence. Should move up to star dev, in my opinion, with 104 tackles, 8 for loss, 4 sacks, and 4 picks. That's a great year. We got almost no pressure from any individual, but the numbers as a team weren't terrible. Frank Montague coming out here, 5 interceptions. Great year from Frank. D. Florence, 4. Kendall Hicks, 4. Trent Ross, 2. Matthew Burnett had 1. He allowed 62 catches, though. He needs some help. We need some help. And we have a lot of picks to make this team a lot better. And I wonder if we're going to see anybody in here from the Bengals. I would kind of doubt it on offense, but on defense, I think we could see somebody. D. Florence at four. That's huge. Kendall Hicks at eight. Rookie of the year goes to Daniel Hutton. No rookies in there for us. Defense rookie of the year, Chance Rivers. We had a uh, guy in there, Roman Gibson at four. Best QB. We're not going to see anything on offense, except for I thought maybe best receiver. Best D-line, no. Best linebacker, no. Best DB, Frank Montague. Okay, Kendall Hicks at three. Safety, winning it. Good for him. 
But all right, we're ready for the off season. And I think we should see some dev trade increases as well. I think we're already in pretty good shape. Is there anyone I need to re-sign though? The Panthers, by the way, looks like they won the Super Bowl. Kendall Hicks is in here? Well, he didn't go up to Superstar X Factor, but he's also pretty good. He's also really cheap. So I'd like to bring him in on a nothing contract, essentially. The rest of the guys can go. We'll either bring you back in free agency if you're like a kicker or punter, or you can walk. 79 defense. This team's going to take a big jump, I think, in year two. And that's a huge start. Lloyd Allen goes up to superstar dev. Our first trade, and he's performing so well. We didn't really have much of a running back. Darrell Richardson's a 43 overall halfback. <laughs> and he's our number two at the moment. Defensively, a Frank Montague. One of our big trades as well. He goes up to superstar X-Factor when he won defensive back of the year. Made his second Pro Bowl. So that's big. Lewis, who we traded for, goes up to star dev. 87 finesse moves. Okay, this is, this is off to a pretty good start. This is off to a pretty good start. Just need to upgrade the offense in a huge way. Uh, might end up making a lot of moves in the draft to trade to like the second, third round to get offensive linemen. We have so much money in free agency. It just depends on who's here. I don't want to bring in someone that's 32. I just don't. Okay, decent start as we upgrade pretty much at every position I want to. I tried going after a running back. He declined and a free safety. Those are the two that I would have been comfortable losing out on and maybe even the right tackle as well, despite him being one of the highest overall players we did go after. But we needed to upgrade the offensive line, and we've definitely done that. Downs is only 27 years old, so we will be able to develop a little bit more. He's a 79 overall, so we're in pretty good shape with that. Butler can then move over to guard. Groves was a big pickup. He is 32, but he's a solid starting right tackle for right now. Uh, he also looks like the rest of the offensive line even though that's the same guy, um, who's also our fullback. Now, Butler probably does move over in this instance. He's a power guy. 6'6", 313. You're going to play guard. One of the pickups I'm most excited about is Ramon Gaines. 25-year-old corner, 80 overall. Should work pretty well. Great speed to him, and that actually frees us up to potentially move Hicks back to safety. Now, of course is a hybrid guy zone coverage is not that good but also his speed isn't great and he's a slot archetype so yeah we could keep him in the slot or or we can move him to safety and have him develop there so i think i'm gonna pencil him in at that spot right now if we drop to safety of course we can move him back to cornerback certainly potential for that but the team is looking a lot better my dryer's going off perfect timing on that great but uh, yeah, I did everything I wanted to do in free agency. We definitely upgraded the team. Yeah, it's the same overall of where we got the team, but it's a way, way better team for that 77 overall. NFL draft time, show me a couple great picks. That's perfect. Two, four, five. I'm trading back from two almost no matter who's here. And that actually may change. Nah, it won't. Let's see you Washington football team takes. Dante Shelby, 79 overall defensive end out of Florida. Probably who I would have taken with that pick. But I will trade down. And it makes no sense to do anything but. We move down from 2-7. and seven. We pick up number 39. We also get a first rounder next year. There's no one I really, really need to take with this pick. So I'm not stressed about it. Take whoever you want. Doug Skinner, 71 overall guard. Jaron Kilmer, 70 overall right guard. And clearly a great move. See, Khalid Graham, I can see he's an early first-round pick. Yeah, I know his name's Khalid. It's an interesting move. Um, he looks good. For sure looks good. I don't think looks amazing. David Trejo's a player I'm excited about. Great athletic profile. Linebackers out of the U can be pretty good. Check out Ray Lewis. This guy could be a killer pick for us, too. David Trejo, maybe no Danny Trejo. Machete. I don't know. There's, there's something there with Ray Lewis, but looks very, very good. We need another inside backer for my 3-4. So he's going to get picked. The question becomes, though, do I take Khalid Graham or do I go a different direction? It's not an overwhelmingly amazing draft class for me, 
So I'm not exactly sure what to do here. Inside backer for sure. I should probably take him with this pick. But what else do we take? We need help on the D-line. I get it. But I'm not sure Khalid Graham is this ungodly amazing player based on his attributes. His combine was great for a defensive end though. We're going to take him. Hopefully he's great. 75 overall, normal dev, number six in the class. Took him at number four. 83 speed, 79 finesse moves, 86 strength. Block shed's real low. This is about what I expected. And I am, of course, underwhelmed. How could I not be? He's going to be expensive. I'm going to have to move him. But with this pick, I am taking David Treo out of Miami. 76 overall, number three in the draft. We took him at number five. Only normal development, but looks very, very good. 89 speed, 89 tackle, 85 hit power. Coverage could be a lot better. But overall, other than normal dev, no complaints. He's extremely good. But if he's the third best player in the entire class, this is not that strong of a draft class. Trading number seven for a future first from the Colts and a second round pick next year. Again, I'm just not going to reach on players, uh, especially because this is a draft class I just don't know a lot about. Like some of these players are very hit or miss. They're more power rush type than speed rush with finesse moves and I just don't really want that doesn't fit my dream of what this team is so I'm just looking to stay away from that Luke Burns though looks like a very very balanced defensive tackle with an amazing athletic profile I'm gonna take a chance here he is the number four player in the class only normal development of course 93 strength 77 speed block shed and power moves Nice awareness, nice finesse moves as well. Tackling, all good. Very good player, but of course, normal development does kind of hurt what he could become. Kyle Hampton looks good other than mid-first rounder and a little bit slow. And then Chuck Orchard looks pretty good. Real fast for a big physical receiver. And would be a third. If he has a good dev trade, it's obviously a great pick. Maybe we'll just take both of them. No point in trading down a bunch just to trade down number nine in the class took him at 20 you figure you have to hit on a dev trade with one of these guys and it just isn't happening it just isn't happening but i guess hopefully the uh apple doesn't fall, uh, fall far from the tree with that last guy and hope he's as good as uh maybe his relatives were in the nfl maybe that's a storyline we're going for kyle hampton 74 normal dev good speed good hit power normal development every single pick Jaden Gore looks very good we're gonna go with him here 75 overall free safety so I suppose we could move our corner back our corner who's playing safety back to corner to play corner back 86 speed 82 hit power decent zone coverage 74 uh, nothing crazy for Jaden Gore but he's, he's decent he'll go with the running back here Durante Gordon new starter number two in the draft 76 overall star better development finally extremely well balanced so he's a power back that can do it all he's elusive he's agile and he's our new starter also has the aggressive catch trait hmm he's massive six foot 221 i'm also going to take a shot at this qb because he has a dev trait number 28 in the class took him at 39 but he does have a development trait I think he probably sits season one. But if our quarterback doesn't go up to star dev and Lane Jacobson has like superstar, I will start him over our uh, our current option. Going with the center here, Jonathan Jackson, late first round guy. Does look to be pretty good. 74 overall, starts immediately at center. Number 20 in the class, took him at 68. Got great pass block. Not much of a run blocker. We don't pick again until the fourth round, but I am going to pretty much trade up to this pick and take a backup running back with the Jets he's a mid first round player who would be a uh, solid backup so it's gonna be like a fourth a seventh and probably a future four to move up to this pick you might be even more okay Jay Kaplan 71 overall left end a four and a five next year for this pick here in the third round will be the last pick of the draft for me I'm not going to worry about that seventh rounder and Jeff Seymour out of Bama. Welcome. 74 overall. Backup running back. That's all he is. Uh, pretty good as well. Pretty well balanced. 79 trucking is pretty awesome for an elusive back. So welcome. We need running back depth for sure. So two in this draft is not crazy. So that defensive end is going to be crazy. Dante Shelby. I would have taken him at two. 
Only has normal development, but is very, very good. Pretty much the entire first round has normal dev, dude. That is what it is. Not entirely shocked or surprised. I'm just numb to it at this point. Every player is going to have normal development. So, I think Jacobson... I think he's better off sitting for a year. Just because we don't know what his dev trade is. And Richard is significantly better at this moment. So, I'm going to change slot receiver in a minute. But this is how the rest of the team is shaping up. This is what we got on defense. It's a whole lot of normal dev. Because that's just what's going to happen. Hopefully in uh, Madden 22 that happens a little less frequently but that is a squad I think we should probably be good for coach XP no the CPU has bought almost nothing for shame for shame should be a better year though we'll change slot receiver I'll see you guys at the midseason mark not good two and six at the midseason mark less than ideal but it's a highly competitive division so I could understand why we are not as good now as I think we could be long term but we do need to bring some guys back including Dante Butler who's really not all that expensive and of course we do have a lot of money still Sherrod Jenkins we don't really need and he's pretty one dimensional so I'll probably let him go could be you know a sign and trade type deal uh, D Florence I want back we'll up that a little bit and he returns for Sherrod Jenkins only a one-year deal I'll give you three with the potential intent to, tra uh, to trade so maybe we'll keep him he's really cheap so it doesn't really matter so that really isn't too bad no playoffs as this is gonna be more than a one-year rebuild six and ten so we were barely better than last year and our offense was still really really bad defense was also terrible the Jaguars are crushing it. Their offense is killer. What about defense? Jaguars were near the top of the league. So Matt Richard, which, which is still not good. He's up to an 80 overall, but not really a great player. Not having a good season. But as a rookie, Durante Gordon was better than a lot of lower overall running backs. You see, and he is superstar X-Factor. Yes. Our, like, one non-normal development pick was superstar. So there's no in-between with us. We'll give him a first one free. So that is excellent. So happy to see that. Jeff Seymour. It's not too bad. Up to a 75 overall. Receiving Alfonso Pendleton over 1,000 yards. 10 TDs. Need him to go up to superstar. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Lloyd Allen. He's still a really good player. Up to an 86 overall. Chuck Orchard was decent as a rookie. Almost straight sixes across the board. D. Florence. A pick, a sack, nine tackles for loss, 115 tackles with the team. David Trejo maybe outperforms him. 103 tackles, eight for loss, but three and a half sacks, but no interceptions. Maybe it about cancels out. Tackles for loss, Khalid Graham is a rookie, 12, led the team. 11 for Luke Burns, also rookie, but had seven sacks. Led the team. Five and a half for Khalid Graham at two. Marcus Lewis, only four and a half. Trejo and Chad Flynn, both at three and a half. Interceptions, barely any. Two for Matthew Burnett, led the team. I highly doubt we're going to see anybody in any awards. So I'm pretty much just going to skip the defensive player of the year. Maybe we sneak in there. Offensive rookie of the year is Durante Gordon. Perfect. Even though I guess it'll be extra XP. David Trejo wins it on defense. And we had like everybody in there. So the fact that Durante Gordon could be like an 85 overall in year two is really big. But we need that middle linebacker David Trejo to go up to star dev. Need that to happen. Show me some big upgrades, please. Hey, Pendleton up to superstar. Jacobson has superstar X-Factor. Oh my goodness. I, I forgot we even drafted him. I, I forgot he had better than uh, normal. So yeah, Richard is gone. Jacobson, you're stepping in. Just random superstar X-Factor freight train. Give him a, give him gambler. Actually give him pro reads. I'm not sure if it would even make a difference. Give him inside dead eye and uh, pocket dead eye. I, again, I'm not sure if those do anything in simulation. Nobody really knows. But wow, our offense kind of went from zero to hero because two superstar X Factor dev rookies. David Trejo did not go up though. A little bit annoying on that. This coverage is so bad. 
We'll give him a fuel general, though. He goes up to an 80, shoots up two overall. He's a middle linebacker wearing 96. Hey, plus three zone coverage. Like that. Like that a lot. Gore went up to star, right? There we go. Stud free safety. Burnett went up to star. I'm trying to, like, get my ducks in a row and figure out who has what. So, okay, this team's actually coming along. It's coming along slowly but surely. If we have a big free agency, I mean, watch out. 85 mil. We have a lot of money. And that's that's a new player on my team, Theo Patterson. Power rusher. He doesn't really fit the scheme I want, but I can play him at defensive end, and I will give him all the money he wants. It's a massive contract. We can afford it pretty easily. Maybe take it down just a little bit. And everybody else is 33 or older. So no value to me at all. Come on, big money, big money, big money. Got everybody. Samuels, Compton, and Patterson. Compton was actually a big pickup. Speed rusher type right end. Really not old at all. Fits his scheme clearly. 26, 88 finesse moves. He'll be able to develop a little bit. So I think that really is a nice pickup. Like, some of these guys just don't fit what I want to do. So I'm going to change him to fit what I want to do. We'll give uh, him speed rusher. I mean, could be a dynamic player. Plus two finesse moves. He already has super high power moves. If finesse moves can catch up, we're going to be in business. And Rodgers doesn't really fit what I want to do. So he's probably going to find himself traded. And then Patterson maybe plays right outside linebacker. Okay, we pick at number seven overall. That's our first pick. And then not again until 23 and then 25. Randy Klein. He's got no picture going on. There's no point to even consider quarterback because we have the best development trait you can get. I'm not sure what the odds are of getting something better than that. It would have to be like an 80 overall. Superstar X Factor player, which is like, gotta be one in like 100 maybe. Maybe even less. 429 speed. Okay, Victor. Not a real need to trade up. So we will just take what is ever available. I like Jeff Truman here. Free safety, early first round guy. We know he's a hybrid guy. I'm not sure what his zone coverage is going to be, but he's an early first round player. He's 5'11", 224. Could be a sub linebacker for us, maybe. He's a 76 overall, number three in the draft. Took him at seven. Only normal dev. Zone coverage is pretty low. The rest doesn't look too bad, but normal development. I mean, how often do I say it? It, it matters. Some of these guys just will never be good. Brandon McCain taking a corner here. And he's a good one. Number five in the class, 76 overall. Only normal development. Coverage is pretty well balanced. But of course, with auto upgrade on, he's only going to end up being good at one thing. So, you know, it is what it is on that. Oh, okay. It's uh, number 25 overall and K Rogers for K Rhodes. Making a big move to get a big scheme fit. Kadeem Rhodes, new highest overall player on our team. 29 years old. So, not the best age. I will admit that, but the new highest overall on our team. We're beefing up this defense. We have our quarterback of the future. We have weapons for him. Our offensive line's good. We built uh, an offensive line, and Eldris Samuels totally completes that. He will move to right guard. We don't need help on the offensive line anymore. We're fine. And I don't know what we can do on offense now. Maybe trade for the best tight end? Get a stud receiver. I like our running back. Making a big move here. Matt Richard, quarterback's on the move. Backup strong safety we drafted. And number 26 overall is going to get us Harper. Now, Harper is only 24 years old. 82 overall outside linebacker. Does fit the scheme. He's got 91 finesse moves. But most importantly, he fills a huge gap. Because if you look on the defensive line... There's not much going on at right end. Like, Larry Compton's there. I think I'm going to move him over to D-tackle as a rush D-tackle. So I need to figure out where we're going to like get all these guys to fit. That's what it comes down to. Because Khalid Graham, I don't love. And, of course, he's lighter for a D-tackle. I get that. But I want these speed rushers out here. And they're very, very difficult to find. So I'm going to try and orchestrate a big trade to get a player I really, really want. Might be difficult, might be impossible, but I'm going to give it a shot. It's Eric Hoskins. I feel like you said Hoskins, like, so weird, but whatever. 
It's just not doable. It's unfortunate. This is an absolute steal. It's a two and a four this year and a future five for, I mean, a really solid defensive tackle. Um, who just wasn't that high of an overall, wasn't that coveted. He's got superstar development, though. Doesn't fit the scheme, but is well-balanced and very, very good. I mean, this is our last pick of the draft. Is there anyone I want here? We have a receiver with amazing speed or an outside linebacker we don't need. We're going to take a receiver. Was hoping he would have a depth trait better than normal, but he does not. Decent player, just normal dev. Not a high enough overall to sneak into the starting lineup. Tough. Okay, uh, we are trading Graham and Lasley. Two pretty good defensive linemen for Manning, but we, know no, uh, we no longer need the defensive tackle. Just not at all. And we're getting a pretty good running back. He will be our backup because Durante Gordon is going to play over him. Just we need somebody else in there who will end up playing probably a lot. And I want someone who's not terrible. So this is going to be the team. It's a really good team. I might trade for another tight end. I think I talked about that and then never ended up following up on that. But we've got a bunch of good players. So much so that... We're not going to be able to have enough guys coming off the edge because between Compton and Patterson and Rhodes and Lewis and now Harper, like there's just not enough spots. There just isn't. So the defense is interesting. <laughs> like we're playing a pretty light front because uh, at defensive attack, we got someone that's 266. Our defensive ends are between 240 and uh, 250, I believe. So, you know. It's not the biggest of guys, but we make up for it with just unreal speed. So I think I'm going to hold off on a D tackle uh, for now. Like, obviously, we don't have the best, either, but hopefully those guys can develop. I'm going to hold off on a tight end as well, and we'll simulate to the midseason mark. We are 6-1. and one. This is a very, very different team. Still not winning the division at 6-1. and one. I am disgusted. But we got Jacobson, we got Gordon. I mean, we got a we got a pretty good team together, man. We got a pretty good unit. And this team is going to simulate to the playoffs. Should be a playoff team here in 2042. Oh yeah, we got to like re-sign guys. There are a lot of guys in here. We should have the money, but our two top receivers are like, I want a lot of money. And I don't know if I want to give it to you. Like Lloyd Allen for sure cuz he's younger, but Alfonso Pendleton is 27. Now nah, we can afford it. Okay, so Dustin Groves, Marcus Lewis, Jamal Harper, Alfonso Pendleton, and Lloyd Allen are all back. Jerry Patterson's trying to sneak his way in. Like, I'm I'm important. You're not. He's a backup QB, which we do need, but he is uh, like pretty bad. First round bye. We crushed it. 12-4, and four, won the division. I guess we had the tiebreaker. Third best offense in Lane Jacobson, first year as a starter. Kind of Patrick Mahomes did a little bit, huh? Second best defense. 31 touchdowns, 16 picks. Not quite a Patrick Mahomes second year. Not at all. 4,100 yards. Durante Gordon actually regressed somehow. Like, not in terms of overall, but in terms of production. A little bit worse. But Will Manning was a solid, capable backup. Receiving Lloyd Allen, 15 TDs over 1,200 yards. Look at him go. Might end up being a superstar X-Factor guy. I mean, this was a really, really good year. Alfonso Pendleton was pretty good. Dylan Looney was great for a tight end. Chuck Orchard was okay as their third option. Defensively, Danny Trejo, we're just going to call him that. 100 tackles, 11 for loss, a sack, and a pick. Tackles for loss, 16 from Theo Patterson. I mean, we had a lot from our front seven, so we'll have to see that. Sacks, Patterson, 9.5. Kadeem Rhodes, 9.5. 8.5 for Jamal Harper. 5 for Larry Compton. 4.5 Dorian Miller. The team is just putting a lot of pressure on opposing quarterbacks. Uh, and our corners led the team in picks. So you'd love to see that. Yearly awards. Nolan Carr wins MVP. Oh my goodness. Lane Jacobson at 8. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Nolan Carr. Lane Jacobson drops to 9 somehow. Defensive Player of the Year, Danny Jones. Tried to trade for this guy several times. He just is way too good, way too hard to get. And they have a lot of guys in there. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Andrew Northcutt. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Antoine Dobbins. Brandon McCain, corner, I believe. No. I don't know where he is. He finishes at four, though. <laughs> I have no idea who that is. I, I want to say he's a corner, but I can't be sure. We do have a first-round bye. 
So in the divisional, we're taking on the 10 and 6 Patriots. Take them out. Let's do it. Nope. <laughs> first round elim for our first round bye. We'll do one more year. And I mean, again, it should be a playoff team. Hopefully we make a very deep playoff run as the Browns beat the Bears in the Super Bowl. And I don't want to bring anybody back. We got all the free agents, all the players I needed to re-sign. We're only going to have about 10 mil maybe in free agency. 3.7. Where did all the money go? Thankfully, there's no one in there that we really need. So we will simulate to the draft and make some magic happen. I do want to see some dev trade upgrades though. We should have a few of those. 86 overall, so the team is uh, really taking a step forward. You'd love to see that. And look at him. Lloyd Allen, superstar X-Factor. He is balling out. Pendleton, is he regressing? Now that he's 28, shouldn't. Nope. Looney went up to star dev. So maybe we don't even need a tight end. Jacobson up to an 83. And then defensively, oh, let's go. Kadeem Rhodes up to Superstar X Factor. That's going to hold off his regression, which is huge. I'm going to give him Unstoppable Force. And, hmm, Under Pressure maybe, plus Edge Threat. Okay, here in the draft, don't pick till 28. Could potentially move up. What would I move up for, though? I mean, it's probably better to just trade this pick, unless there's, like, some crazy player that doesn't exist that's going to be in this class. <laughs> There's just no one that we can draft at this point that I think is going to work his way in. Yeah, I can't I can't picture a situation. All right, round one, pick 28. There's only one player out of my draft board. Mike Graham, early first round guy, supposed to go in the fourth. Ooh, he might actually work his way into the starting lineup. The number one overall player in the draft. Fits a scheme, is only 21. Has star better development. This is the only guy, the only uh, scenario or situation where we would have drafted someone that would come in and play and play a lot and start. Do I play him at D-tackle? That becomes the question. I think the answer becomes yes. I'm tempted. Oh, okay. Backup D-tackle, way buried on the depth, uh, depth chart for a superstar X-Factor tight end. He's old. But he's also better than what we have by a significant amount. So Mike Cotton will be my pick there. Good pickup for sure. All right, trading Ramon Gaines and backup safety Jeff Truman for a new middle linebacker, one who is 27 years old, who has an 84 overall. It's an upgrade over D. Florence, who I'm now very comfortable trading. And I'm just trying to get just a little bit better in this final season. Oh, okay. Florence, Compton, and our starting right tackle Groves gets us Reynolds from the Panthers. He's a 93 overall. And he is an upgrade over Jamal Harper. He is older. I don't really know what to do. I didn't expect that trade to go through. He's clearly a better player. Someone we should get to uh, have a lot of playing time on our defense. But I'm not, I'm not sure what we do with him. He's superstar X Factor. I got to play him. I have to. He's amazing. But then what happens to Harper? I think he moves to right outside linebacker. And then that kind of puts Lewis on the chopping block. Actually, you know what we have to do? Oh, damn, Theo Patterson just... He's amazing, but he just doesn't fit the scheme. That's the tricky bit. What if I move Theo Patterson to defensive tackle? Is that the move? Like, Miller's good. He's so good, but doesn't offer much of a pass rush. I want Graham to be D-tackle, because he is big, 265, fits the scheme, could end up being phenomenal. It feels stupid to trade Patterson because he's so good, but if I can use him to get a stud middle linebacker, maybe I do that. Or even stud free safety, big corner, something like that. Trading Patterson straight up for Ferguson, he is a 91 overall, superstar uh, X-Factor strong safety. And now we have the two highest overall strong safeties in the league. He's got 90 man. He's going to play free safety now. Well, actually, you know what would be fun? If we moved him to cornerback. He's got 90 man coverage. I think he could do it. And we don't really have a lockdown CB. What's his overall? 
He's a 90 overall. So, I think this was a worthwhile pickup for sure, even if we are playing him at corner. All right, we got to part with a pretty good player here. Burns, defensive tackle, a first and a fourth. But we do get our future franchise right tackle. Of course, you might remember we traded our right tackle. But now that is this guy sliding over from right guard to right tackle. Does have superstar development. That's why it was a little bit more difficult to trade for him. He now becomes the best right tackle in the league. At this point in simulation, because no offensive linemen ever have good development traits, and because most players don't have good development traits in Madden, and specifically, offensive linemen cannot get increased development traits from performance, it means that offensive line is always not very good in the future. So, we got a pretty good one. This is our offense. This is our defense. It is a very good group of players. Just, it's a little bit light. Like, D-tackle, he's only 260. Will be a rush D-tackle. Should be pretty unbelievable. We have Rhodes and Reynolds off the edge. Is that what I want? I mean, Rhodes can be pretty nasty. 98 finesse move. Reynolds should be equally nasty with 97 finesse moves. Harper, I'd like to play a little bit more, but what is he really going to do? He just doesn't offer what they do. So between Hewitt, Trejo, sub linebacker, we got Ferguson in the slot. I think that's fine. I'm going to put the correct guys in the slot at wide receiver, and then I'll see you guys for the playoffs. Well, I'll stop at the midseason mark. Even though this is a playoff team, I'd bet anything. Four and three at the midseason mark. It's not actually looking all that great. Okay. So when you remember when I said I'd bet anything? It was like 10 seconds ago. Ugh, I don't know how good I feel about it. I mean, our team's so good. I can't imagine we missed the playoffs, even with a rough start. But I'll see you for the playoffs. I just came back. We're 8-3. and three. I'm feeling pretty comfortable just to simulate to the playoffs now. You can actually take the division. I like that little pit stop. Really <laughs> set my mind at ease. 12-4. and four, We're in the wild card. Didn't win the division, though. Damn, that's crazy. We got off to kind of a rough start three losses in a row and then just pretty much won out the rest of the season except for week 17 against the Patriots lost by a field goal but this team came to play rough start and a monster rebound best offense in the league look at Lane Jacobson go 4,400 yards 35 touchdowns nine interceptions he's up to a 90 with morale in just his third season starting rushing Durante Gordon was very good averaging over four yards per carry he's up to a 90 in just his third season. Receiving, Lloyd Allen crushed 1,300 yards, 12 TDs. Mike Cotton was amazing. 1,000 yards, 9 touchdowns at tight end. Alfonso Pendleton was very good. Orchard did his job defensively. Matthew Hewitt, 112 tackles, 5 for loss, 1 sack, 3 interceptions. Very good year. And man, do we get some pressure. Mike Graham, 13 tackles for loss as a rookie D tackle. He moved over 7 sacks. But Tavares Reynolds picked up 15 Kadeem Rhodes, 10.5. 7.5 for Jamal Harper. 7 for Mike Graham. Balling out. Matthew Hewitt and Kendall Hicks each had three interceptions. Yearly awards. Lane Jacobson wins MVP. This is what it's all about. He also wins Offensive Player of the Year. Defense Player of the Year, Shelton Walford, also tried to trade for him several times. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Kevin or Kenny Mahoney. I can't read. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Antonio Reed. Mike Graham at 2. I'm excited to see his development trade. He didn't win best QB? Lane Jacobson didn't? How is that possible? How is that possible? 90 overall team, 89 offense, 92 defense. So, no dev trait increases, obviously, at this point in the year. But we just have superstar X-Factor all over the place. Show me something amazing for the D-tackle. It is superstar. I will take that from Mike Graham. Up to an 82 overall. 87 finesse moves already. I mean, this team is obviously out here ready to win a super bowl will it happen though or will be or will we be eliminated round one against the chiefs i sure hope it's not that that'd be super sad and a very very sad end to the video a lot of sadness going around we win we actually crush them 45 to 7 upgrade points for the boys and it's the jags in the divisional one game away from the conference championship i'll jump in if we make it and we do make it 49 to 7. We are destroying in the playoffs. 
Browns in the conference championship at Browns Field. It no longer has a name. They lost their licensing. We're way better. I tried to take a trade for Danny Jones. I told you guys that. He's on the other team for this one, but our team's amazing. We are up 7-0 early. Browns answer with a field goal and then another field goal. It's 7-6. to 7-9 now. Can we actually get back on the board? We haven't scored since our opening drive. Down by 2. Down by 5 now. I'm jumping in. They're on the 15. We need a big stop. We got to hew it out here. Make a play. Make a play. They're in these weird old uniforms. And our defensive line... Kind of letting him go through there. Oh, it's a screen. No one read it. Oh, and he jukes us out. Touchdown, Browns. Montague scores. No, Montague's not our team. I thought it was maybe the Montague that we had before. I'm a little bit all over the place right now. That's actually a, a really bad time to allow a touchdown. We are down by 12. Two minutes to go. We got to take a shot. We got Lloyd Allen, though. And he's over the top. Allen breaks a tackle down to the eight. The 6'5 beast. Lloyd Allen makes a gigantic play. We're going to run. Oh, Jacobson, touchdown. And we are right back in the game. He was actually pretty quick out of the pocket there. Do we go for two in this spot? Yeah, we're going to. Wide open. Two point conversion is successful. We're down by four, but this means if they kick a field goal, we don't lose the game. We don't have to go for two. So, I mean, it was a... I'd rather go for two now than later, right? And yeah, we don't get the onside. Deliver a big hit. We need a fumble, man. Just hit him. The ball's going to come loose. It's third and one. We need a stop. Dude, all I need is a hit stick animation. We can't get it. They're going to throw. Please. I mean, Hicks is on a different freaking planet. How are you sagging off so much? We needed one stop. And now the game's over. I'm sick. So that is going to do it for the rebuild. We built a really, really good team. Just unfortunately didn't end up being good enough. That was a really odd game. But Lane Jacobson won Offensive Player of the Year, MVP, Passer Rating Leader. He's going to go up quite a bit. So final team looks like this went ahead and upgraded everybody and it's a pretty good team i mean 91 overall superstar right tackle look at our weapons on offense jacobson's a beast but lloyd allen is a monster receiver not much of a route runner but if he can get deep if he can even just be in the red zone and use that 6-5 frame you're going to be dominated. 99 spectacular catch, 99 catching, 99 catching traffic, 92 speed even, 97 release. Tough guy to cover. And then defensively, like, we got superstar X-Factor all over the place. We have superstar in a bunch of different areas. Bunch of really, really good players. That's a team. And that's what it's like if you rebuild a team 50 years in the future, aka ended up being 20 years in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. It's free. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. It's insane, I hit it at the park, Ben Bones. See me high step to the end zone. My life like a game, Nintendo. Play with the best, let them know. Get off the track, the train coming through. Yeah. Promise you get in my way, then you best believe I'ma just run over you. Yeah, yeah. I'ma turn taking it back to the house. Defense a joke, I'm laughing so loud. Speed burst good.